temperature monitoring has been happening uh, I don't know, the last 50 years anyway. It started off with analog um, temperature recorders in, you know, in the form of paper and, and a battery with a almost like a lie detector only um, uh, logging temperature. And uh, that was always put in sea containers. And, um, you know, the first thing someone did the other end was drag that out, rip it apart and, and look at the chart. And that's progressed into, um, um, I would say, digital loggers, and which had to be recovered, plugged in, downloaded, um, you know, software, um, quite cumbersome in some respects. Then the industry progressed to um, USB loggers that were plug and play. Um, and they're still about today, but they've still got to be recovered at the end point, whether it's by sea or by air or, or wherever. They've still got to be recovered, plugged into uh, a, um, a PC and then downloaded and somebody's got to find the, you know, uh, then they've got to send the information off. Now they only, they can choose whether they find that, choose whether they plug it in, choose whether they send it to you. With, when there's insurance involved with sea containers, they must put two of those USB loggers in every container to partially guarantee they'll at least get one back. The progression to real time has, has meant that, well, one for insurance purposes, you only need one real time logger because we're guaranteed to get the information. We're getting it all the time throughout the journey. Um, the other thing with a real-time logger is that um, you're, you basically, you can, I won't say put out the fires before they start, but you can see what's happening, you know, and um, from the minute you load it into, a, into either a sea freight or an air freight, and uh, if there's a problem um, before it leaves Australia, you can deal with that problem. If there's a problem during transit, you can uh, at least know before, it, uh, upon arrival, that you've got a problem and you can deal with it. And our motto is manage the outcome. Um, in sea containers, if you're going into a protocol country, you can, um, you can either, if there's a problem, you can divert the container into a non-protocol non country. Um, or you can alert the customer and say, we've got a temperature issue, we need to make a claim. I think what it'll do is it'll make every link of the chain more responsible if they know it's happening. Look, shipping lines are becoming more and more responsible as well. Um, and, and they tell me that they are putting, uh, some of them are putting monitoring systems in. But traditionally, any system shipping lines have in, they, they do not impart their knowledge. We're exporting stone fruits, uh, citrus, uh, mangoes. Uh, table grapes, um, you know, we, we have some exports going out every week of the year. We do two things, we have our own exports, um, of which we religiously use loggers in, and then we service the, um, the fresh produce industry with loggers. Um, so we sell to um, either growers, producers, grower, producer, exporters, or exporters and they will then, you know, put the logger in the, in the product. We even, you know, even sell to transport companies who um, in the past when there's been a problem uh, with our turn, the first thing the producer turns to is the transport company and blames them. And uh, we've had uh, multiple transport companies now approach us uh, to be able to put them in, in their transport to at least prove that they're, not, that they're not at fault, it's happening somewhere else. We've had a couple of instances um, in the grape industry this last, in the 2020 season, where um, in one instance um, I got a call from an exporter, a grower, who said, oh, your logger's not working. And um, it had been sitting on, um, I think, I think something like nine or ten degrees for seven hours, 
and he said, your, your, uh, your logger's not working. And so I had a look at it and um, we've never had an instance of a logger not work. And it's always been, you know, um, outside influences. And in this case, the, um, the generator on the train wasn't working. So it had, it had travelled for seven hours at 10 degrees when it should have been travelling at um, zero to one. And um, so that they were able to then notify the, you know, the, uh, the people who run the train and, um, and, and put everybody on notice that they could have a potential claim. Another instance where a container went by road from uh, Mildura to Adelaide and by the time it got to Adelaide, um, they had to notify the, um, the shipping line that the container wasn't working properly. And that got to the point where the shipping line at their expense actually unloaded that container and uh, the, the produce out of that container and put it into another one because of a malfunction.